Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Neo4j online meetup. This is number 40. So, so welcome. Glad you could uh, all join us. Uh, today, we've got Fabian and Sebastian uh, joining us, and they're going to be talking about a project they've been working on called MetaXP, how to support Neo4j in the exploration of large knowledge graphs. Uh, so before I introduce them, um, just a quick bit of housekeeping. If you have uh, any questions that you want uh, to ask them or you can put those on the YouTube live chat, and when there's a gap, uh, I will ask it to them. Uh, they're going to be showing some code in the presentation, so you'll want to make sure your resolution is high enough so you can see it. Uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, there's a little cog, uh, and make sure that the quality is set to 720p or higher. Um, and with that, I guess, uh, in case you've not met me, my name is Mark, and I work in the Neo4j uh, developer relations team, and I guess I'll, I'll maybe Sebastian and Fabian. You can also uh, introduce yourself and maybe say how you got into Neo4j, and uh, yeah, well, maybe briefly explain what you're using it for. Okay, yeah. Hi, uh, everybody. Uh, we are two bachelor students, and um, we uh, the last two semesters uh, we worked on the project um, at the Hustle Partner Institute where we study. It's called a bachelor project, and um, during such a bachelor project, uh, one has two partners. Um, for our project, where uh, the one partner was Neo4j, um, as the task was to do a graph exploration to uh, build a system which can do graph exploration. Um, so yeah, this is what we did, and yeah. So we will start with the presentation. Cool. So I guess I can maybe we can uh, can hand over to your to your presentation uh, now. Um, and maybe I can also share the link uh, to people in case they they want to have a look. But cool. Yeah. So um, away, uh, I'll hand over. Okay. Cool. Um, yes. Let us uh, present you the system we built and explain it to you. Um, Yes, as I said, uh, we had two partners. The one is um, Neo4j and the other one, the Helmholtz Centrum uh, Munich. Um, they are researching health and environmental issues. Uh, so they had a very large uh, biological uh, graph and a very complex graph. Um, so they searched for a possibility to explore this graph. Um, what they did in the past is they had queries like this, so uh, relatively complex queries, and another problem is that they do not generalize uh, very well, um, uh, yeah, and took time to, to write, and so on. Uh, and we thought about uh, how can we uh, simplify this, uh, reduce the complexity. Um, so simply, um, how can we do better or can we do better? Um, and to answer this question, um, we first of all have to take a look at uh, what graph exploration uh, means. Um, so basically, it's, it is we have a lot of data and we want to get knowledge out of the data because if we have a lot of data, this loan is not uh, an adva advantage in uh, many cases. So we need the knowledge uh, in the graph or in the data. And um, graph exploration, um, we start by having a question or uh, do not know actually what we are searching for, but while we are searching, we get interesting information and important information, which can lead also to new ideas. Um, yes, that's basically what graph exploration is about. Um, and uh, graph exploration has several layers, uh, built several layers between the user and the graph. Uh, so we want to connect the graph and the user in a um, nice way. And uh, as, as first level, as uh, highest level, we have interactive algorithms in the graph exploration stack. Then lower, we have uh, intuitive queries. And um, the most low level is um, that we have 
adaptive databases. Um, as you can see by the papers which were pub uh, published uh, recently, it's a topic uh, which is highly researched recently. Um, and our system deals with the two higher levels, so the intuitive queries and the interactive algorithms. Um, to uh, yeah, explain what our system does, uh, first of all, let us take a look um, at what the problem specifically was. Uh, the problem is that we have two node sets and we want to know how similar are they. Um, an example would be we have a node set with movies we like and we have a node set with, with movies uh, we don't know yet. And we want to know, will I like the movies I don't know yet? Um, so we want to compare the ones we like with the ones we don't know yet. Um, that would be an example. If you have biology, an example would be um, you have two, two illnesses and you want to know how similar they are and what makes them similar. Um, Okay, how do we approach this question? Um, first of all, we have to take a look at what a knowledge graph is because we are working with knowledge graphs. Basically, knowledge graphs are graphs, of course. So we have a we, a node set, and we have E, a set of edges. Um, but we also, in addition, have um, two labeling functions. Um, the one labels edges and the other one nodes so that every edge um, um, belongs to a type and every node belongs to a type. An example would be Leonardo DiCaprio would get the type actor because he's an actor. Um, okay, and with this labels, we can build um, a meta level, so a meta template of the graph, so to say, um, where we have the information um, which node labels uh, are connected over which edge labels. So basically, if in the graph uh, two nodes with two certain node labels are connected over a certain edge uh, with a certain edge label, then um, we would have uh, the two node labels connected by the edge label in a, a meta template uh, we call the schema. Um, so that would be the schema of the graph, the complete uh, overview over these connections between node labels with edge labels. Um, and more specifically, we can compute meta paths. Uh, meta paths are alternating sequences of node and edge labels. Um, let us take a look at the example we have here. If we have a graph, for example, and we extract from the graph the path, uh, Linus Dingate's uh, mother is Susan Dingate and she employs uh, Paul Paul, then the resulting meta path would be a person is the mother, mother of a person who employs a person, uh, which we, for example, can get out of the graph schema. So the meta template of the graph. And these meta paths are basically a concise representation of content which is in the graph. So we use these meta paths for several uh, tasks um, in our system. Uh, one is that we show the user through meta paths what is in the graph. Um, a second is that we um, let the user rate those meta paths to get domain knowledge from him about his question he has so that we can compute the similarity between those two sets, not only uh, with structural values we have, structural values, uh, so we take a look at the structure of the graph uh, that was also done in the, pa in the past, uh, connectedness and so on. Um, uh, we also take the domain knowledge into consideration. And uh, the third thing we are using MetaPaths for is to explain the similarity we calculate um, and show to the user. 
Okay. Um, so now we uh, want to show you shortly show you uh, how we do um, the the weighting of the meta paths or um, how we get the domain knowledge from the user. Um, let us um, take this example. Maybe we are a mu movie uh, journalist and we want to write an article about Jana Kruger. Um, but we don't know whether that would be actually interesting for people living, for example, in the USA. So uh, we want to know um, how famous is Diana Kruger in America. So we have our two um, node sets, uh, Diana Kruger, and um, the second would be movies produced in the uh, in America, um, for example. Uh, have the matrix or pop fiction and um, what we now do is to compute such meta paths uh, from the graph from this movie and actor graph and um, would for example get uh, meta paths like person won an award uh, which was also won by a movie or a person acted in a movie which was directed by a person or um, a person was born in a the same country as another person which acted, uh, who acted in the movie. Um, and as you can see uh, from the smileys, um, the, the user um, has an idea of the concepts which are interesting to his question, to answer, for answering, answering his question. So maybe for our question, we ask, asked how famous is Diana Kruger in America. Um, the, uh, the first path would be the most interesting. So the user would rate it um, the highest and the other um, two paths lower. Um, so that's how we get the main knowledge from the user. We will explain this in more detail later. The other thing, as I all, uh, already mentioned, uh, was that we also have a structural value, which, will, which we, for example, get from calculating the connectedness between those two node sets. And we combine those two values to calculate the similarity with them. Um, okay, so now that we have an overview uh, what we do, uh, let us show you the single steps our system uh, executes. Um, yeah. So first of all, we compute the meta paths. Then we learn a representation of the meta paths, um, which we need later for uh, certain techniques, as you will see, um, to use the techniques we need. Um, the step after this uh, is the one where the user really have to, has to work as he has to rate meta paths um, so that we get the domain knowledge from him. And afterwards we calculate similarity and um, explain it to him so that he then can uh, go on further and um, explore the graph further, uh, um, create more queries and so on. Um, the first step of this uh, I will explain and afterwards the other steps Sebastian will explain to you. Um, okay, <laughs> so the first step, meta path computation. Um, okay, so we want to get meta paths fast. Uh, how can we do this? Well, if we do this, if we compute meta paths directly on the graph, it uh, can get uh, computationally very um, uh, so we can, may need a lot of time for this, um, as the structure of the graph uh, can be quite complicated. And the question is, do we have um, a structure which is less complicated than the graph itself? And yes, in most cases, the meta template um, we explained before is simpler than the graph itself. So the idea is to compute meta paths on the schema of a path uh, of a graph um, but we have an 
uh, we have a problem there. Um, that is that, of course, we lose information if we do not compute it on the graph, but on the schema, which has less information in it. So um, if we compute it on the schema, um, metapaths are produced, which show information which, um, which is not actually in the real graph. So for example, we have two node types and an edge type in the, uh, which are connected of an edge type in the uh, in a meta path which is produced, but actually uh, in the real graph, no two nodes with these certain node types are connected over this certain edge type. So this is a problem. How do we uh, solve this? Um, we thought of a solution where we use classification. So first of all, we use an exact algorithm, which computes um, all metapaths up to a certain length um, on the real graph, um, but only short metapaths. And these metapaths um, are only metapaths which really exist. So we train a classifier on these metapaths, and then we compute with the uh, algorithm which is faster, but uh, makes mistakes. We compute longer metapaths and then metapaths, and then we use the classifier to classify the longer metapaths whether they are um, um, wrong or right, so to say, whether we should show them to the user or not. And with this uh, solution, we minimize the metapaths, um, which are, so to say, wrong, um, which we show to the user. And uh, at the same time, keep in several cases, uh, speeds um, advantages over just using an exact algorithm for a longer length. Okay, so this was the first step. And now Sebastian will explain everything else to you. So after calculating the metapath, we um, have a lot, lot of data, so a lot of metapath. But the problem is that they are somehow like categorical features. So they um, consist out of categorical entities, the node and edge types. And if we want to use any um, basic machine learning algorithms on it, we um, somehow need a metrical representation. And um, like done in um, the text embedding community. Um, we also want to derive uh, a vector for this metapath. And um, to do this, basically, um, we use techniques from um, the text embedding community. And in our special case, we need it for, um, so for in our project for the active learning part and the preference prediction. Um, I will talk uh, in two slides about it. And so we are, um, when looking at metapaths, we have, we have some special challenges. And one is that um, the similarity isn't clearly defined. Um, we have a very large number of metapaths, um, as Fabian explained, um, as a problem in the previous step. And there is also a high redundancy in the metapaths because many metapaths share um, some parts like. Um, combinations of uh, node and edge types, uh, which are in many uh, metapaths. So we um, embedded uh, them after the principle that metapath, which um, occur between two nodes in the graph, have some, um, um, some meaning in common. One can imagine the metapath also as concepts in the graph. Um, representing, for example, different relations between um, people or um, like companies and so on. And then um, if two people have, are connected by the same concepts, the concepts or at least some of the concepts um, have something in common. So um, in the end, we uh, use the Skipram model, which basically was introduced by the virtual Act paper. Um, with the special addition of separate information. Um, after calculating this um, embeddings for the meta path, we can do active learning on them. And um, what's active learning? So active learning is um, a way to 
Um, yeah, um, so that the user don't has to rate all the training um, data one has. Instead, he just has to label um, different examples where a label is um, especially helpful. So in our case, um, the user rates MetaPath, as you uh, will see in, in um, the system description later. And but there are very very many MetaPath, so um, the user should only rate some MetaPath and especially the one where the system gets uh, the most information. So could you? Yeah. Uh, sorry, could you explain a little bit for people how you go from having the knowledge graph and what information you're feeding from the knowledge graph into the uh, word to vec model? Because I guess people will be most familiar with the idea of I'm feeding sentences into that type of model and getting some output. So how does your approach differ to that? So um, node embedding techniques would um, start random walks from all the nodes in the graph and just produce um, the random walks and feed the random walks as sentences. We want to embed the meta path and also the node and edge types in the meta path. So we are calculating the meta path between two nodes and that for all um, edges in, um, in the graph. And then we are treating all the meta path which occur between two um, nodes as one sentence basically and each word is uh, one um one meta yeah that's, that's all cool thing. okay and yeah in the active learning so meta path there are many it's very time consuming to rate them um and it's also quite hard because um a user has to really um think about what this concept means for the question he has in mind or the question he or she asks um, the system. And so um, it's quite tedious to write. And the solution, as I explained, is active learning. And here we um, ask the user only for labels for um, very informative paths, so where the system learns a lot. Um, that's, yeah. Uh, modeled uh, probabilistically by, by um, some general active learning algorithms. And so we can iteratively, iteratively, iteratively um, ask the user for, for labels and learn from them. That's the same here as a uh, small diagram. So we um, would ask the user some questions. Questions are, in, in our sense, the meta path and they should rate. Then um, the user gives some rating for, for the meta path and we, we update the active learning model and uh, the circuit continues. Um, so how do you, just to explain to everybody, how do you know what, what questions to ask? Like how do you filter what you should be asking the user in the ask new questions stage? Yeah, so um, one could imagine a, a very uh, simple technique, like um, if I only showed meta paths of length three to the user, um, I should now I should know no, I should also um, show them uh, meta path of length four, for example, so to get some diversity um, in, in the labeled instances, or in our case. Um, we uh, we have a predictor for the label for all the different metaphors, and this predictor also outputs an uncertainty. Uh, so how certain or uncertain um, the predictor is for um, labeling this instance with a specific um, label or rating. And so we choose the examples where the predictor is um, most uncertain, and ask, uh, yeah, use this one and this one's as questions to the user. And after getting uh, the knowledge from the user, in the last step, we calculate um, 
like the similarity between the two input sets and um, explain the, the result to the user. So one can imagine the whole process as on the one hand, uh, the graph, the knowledge graph um, as an input and on the other side, the main knowledge from the user, um, which they put into by writing the meta path. And we get a personalized exploration tool um, where the user gets a similarity measure to also compare other node sets. Um, we can show related nodes to nodes in the input set and also uh, show some statistics. And one can uh, use the, the whole tool also to embed nodes. So previously we embedded the meta path. Here we want to embed nodes. And um, by using the rating of the meta path, so the domain knowledge, we can um, change the vectors in a way that they reflect the user rating. And then we don't only have a normal node embedding, but a personalized node embedding based on the preferences of the user. And questions we can ask to the uh, vector space is how close are different input sets? Um, what are clusters in the data? What are outlayers? Um, and also, like, the, the, related nodes. The whole um, system is uh, yeah, built with uh, JavaScript, Python, and NeoFetch as graph database. And all the front end part we um, implemented in React. So the node selection, the meta path ordering, and um, also the result visualization. And um, in the lower parts, we um, so in the back end, we embed the meta path using um, virtual or fast text implementations um, doing the active learning and exploration. And in the lowest level, um, we added some algorithms. So the meta path um, mining algorithms to the Neo4j graph algorithm library. Um, to calculate them directly into uh, in, in the Neo4j database. And now uh, a demo would follow. Sadly, we broke it right uh, before the meetup. So we will just show you um, a YouTube video explaining the, the whole process or explaining you the process um, during the video. So we'll just switch from the presentation to the video. Um, skip. We're definitely in an in inception now, in a video, in a video. <laughs> so um, that's the, the, the first page, basically. Where I think people can also, can also uh, go to your uh, web page, right, and try and download and, and try this out on their own data set. Yeah. So um, all the uh, things are open source, and everyone can try it on, on its own data set. So that's the first page where the user um, would search for nodes, for example, with a cipher query um, specifying the nodes. And um, so someone would um, match for um, actor in this example and add it to the one node set. So um, these are the two inputs uh, apart from the meta path rating. Now I put a second uh, cipher query and also run it against the database. We can um, like select different movies we want to um, compare with uh, Stephanie and Maria. And after selecting these two as inputs, we have like a filter where we can um, exclude some node types and edge types we are not interested in, or we, we say basically um, we are interested in all the data in the graph and just um, select all of them. 
And then on the next page, the user can rate the different meta path by um, clicking on them and move them on the scale up here. So meta path on the right would be would mean that it's um, very interesting for the research question one has, or uh, on the left side, it's um, very uninteresting or irrelevant because maybe um, it, it stands for concepts which aren't important um, for um, other things. And um, after rating some of them, it also is skip. Um, one can either uh, go to the next, uh, next iteration or to the next page. And um, next iteration, there the path with the active learning comes in. So the user rated this um, five meta path up here. And so far, one was deleted because it's completely um, useless. And now, um, after clicking next iteration, we can do active learning, predict a rating for all the other meta path, and select the one which are most interesting. And now, on the result page, we have a similarity for the two different node sets. And then we can um, explain the similarity by um, showing the different meta path which contributed to this um, similarity. and in uh, which part they, they uh, contribute. And additional information we can show here is um, how many instances of a specific meta path are in the database. Um, so these are the number of instances, and this would be this meta path here, first acted in movie, and so on. And then we can also show some examples from the graph. And as I think one can imagine, it's um, the, the com complexity of the meta path is um, on the one hand the length, but also comes from the, um, the size of the schema. So here, it maybe it doesn't mean too much because the graph only consists out of movies, uh, persons, persons and movies. But um, if we look on Freebase or Wikidata, for example, we have very, very rich um, um, yeah, uh, schemas with up to millions of different node and edge types. So there, the meta path would be, um, would say um, more, would be more expressive. And as last point, we can also show similar nodes with. Um, how similar they are to, to, the, to the nodes in the input set for nodes. So that's basically our system. And switch back to the presentation. So as a small recap to our um, whole um, project, what are our um, experiences with neo -Project? So we heavily use the Neo4j graph algorithms um, and also extended them. And in our, um, so our experience was that it's somehow the trade-off between efficiency and convenience because um, many information, um, especially for uh, such a knowledge graph, like um, so information someone maybe doesn't need um, in normal cases isn't directly accessible over the graph algorithms and a bit complicated to access. And um, also, especially for knowledge graphs, um, or if one wants to run um, their algorithms on uh, bigger graphs, is, the debugging is quite tedious. Because with small graphs, uh, so you can use an um, example graph in a um, test case, a unit um, test, but uh, on big graphs that's somehow hard and you don't get um, a, a really um, debugging information. Then uh, very positive points where you can, um, it's really a great support and community and Michael was always available uh, uh, for us helping when we have problems with uh, our implementation or a new project. Then Cypher as a uh, language is 
really easy to begin with, but um, it's quite hard to reach a point where you can really write efficient queries and um, yeah, especially for your users. And then maybe one wish would be for the graph algorithms package, especially to have a better documentation because um, in some parts it's quite hard to understand what you have to do and in which way you have to do it. And um, so the, the whole project, the, the paper, so the, the system you saw in the beginning was um, like the work uh, from a paper we published. We can also um, share the link with you in, in the meetup page later. And after developing the system, we um, saw different parts in, in the domain of uh, knowledge graphs and graph exploration, where we especially uh, yeah, like want to improve them or um, work further on them. So one part was, and basically this matches the different parts we um, explained before, the efficient metapath computation, the metapath embedding, the active learning and the, and the explan explanation of exploration. And this different research topics related in eight bachelor theses, um, because um, our team consisted of um, eight people. And um, so that's basically the end on, on, of our work on this one. And as a closing remark, um, it's all open source. You can find it on GitHub. Um, if you want to try it on um, your own graphs, we have some documentation. Maybe you um, will face some problems. Um, then don't hesitate to um, yeah, us an email and we uh, will try to help you. So thanks for your attention. Cool. Thank you for, for taking the time to pre present us. We've got some questions, but before I, before I uh, address those, if you, if you liked uh, the presentation, don't forget to, to like it on the, uh, the YouTube UI so that other people uh, can find it. Uh, and I guess we, uh, I'll, I'll go over to the questions now. So we got one from Chris. Uh, he says, "Can we use this application to connect a fraud to connect fraud financial links to people who might have benefited from a target transaction, mainly for investigating fraud using metadata to link or detect fraud suspects?" So I guess it's a, a finance knowledge graph of some kind. So um, yeah, it, I would say mainly depends on um, how the graph looks like. So um, for example, for the meta path embedding part, you really need a schema rich graph. And so um, it depends on, um, yeah, on how much the meta path really um, say about, about the domain. And then um, maybe you, so one could also um, imagine that there are specific meta paths which are um, basically only occur when um, there's some fraud. And so one could um, especially target this meta path and so search for this meta path. So this would be one idea. Cool, hopefully, hopefully that, um, that answered the question. I guess to give people a few more seconds, they're usually slightly uh, behind us if they have uh, any more questions. Um, uh, but also, yes, yeah, so, uh, one, one, one other thing we got uh, from the project was um, Fabian and Sebastian and their, their colleagues contributed the uh, random walk uh, algorithm that they built to the NFJ graph algorithms library. So that one is available if, you, if you're wanting to to use that as part of any of your uh, machine learning uh, pipelines, you can uh, you can grab that on the latest uh, released version of uh, the graph algorithms library. For the uh, finance question, um, Chris suggests that information would be bank accounts, sister companies, names of individuals, maybe directors of the banks, uh, bank transfer dates, that type of information. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like yeah that maybe that it, uh, maybe some of it is rich enough to uh, to help you find um, some interesting things. 
I suppose a, a, an open data set that you could try that on is the, the Panama Papers one. That's, I don't know if it's, if it's rich enough to, mm -hmm. uh, to do it. Yeah, so uh, um, it, it really depends on, on the schema. So we can't, so, or at least we don't um, have integrated attributes of nodes, for example. Um, so this could be one further extension of um, our system to also integrate this information. Um, in the moment, we are only um, yeah, uh, using the node and attributes for the whole system. And then another suggested data set, supply chain networks for calculating similarity between companies uh, with weights on each link. So yeah, maybe you can maybe you can talk a little bit uh, about um, calculating similarity of nodes in these graphs and like some of the techniques that you've tried and the other ones you've come across. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think the basic way to do this would um, to calculate a node embedding and there are um, very many um, approaches out there. So there are like classical node embeddings where you want to um, embed a, not a knowledge graph, but a normal graph based on the structure um, of the graph. So um, there is like deep work, node to back verse, um, and so on, which only use the information in a normal um, graph. Then there are, I would call them translational embeddings, um, like trans H, trans E, P, trans H, and so on. They are all um, working on knowledge graphs, but only on nodes and um, edge types. So they are embedding the nodes and the edge types. And um, the other thing um, we um, presented, the, the MetaPath embedding also produces um, node type embeddings and edge type embeddings, and um, also the whole MetaPath embedding. And Depending on, on the data you have and which technique you um, choose, you get an embedding for the different nodes. And an embedding is really just um, a vector representation of the nodes. And then you can do like basic linear algebra or um, yeah, like calculating the cosine similarity um, of two points or two vectors representing the nodes. And then you get uh, um, distance or similarity of Notes. Have you come across any any good ways for so like say you got a you got a say you got a graph and you've got you calculated these embeddings for all the nodes and you want to know okay can I find like the, the ones that are closest to me in terms of that embedding space? Um, obviously the brute force way would be okay, I just compare every single node against uh, every single node, and that works quite well for small graphs, but obviously as you get bigger it gets uh, sort of n squared uh, number of compute calculations to, to to work that out. Have you come across any yeah, so ways of doing that better? I think um, the natural way would be to use an efficient data structure for it. Mm -hmm. so first calculate um, an embedding for all the different nodes, and then there are some uh, things like an air tree, uh, which is especially um, designed for like spatial information and basically the embedding is um, nothing else mm -hmm. so would um, uh, save it in such a data structure and then efficiently query the neighborhood um, of, of a point. I've also seen, uh, I've sort of been playing around with some similar stuff, um, sort of locality sensitive hashing uh, techniques seem to be, seem to be reasonably uh, popular as well for that type of thing. Uh, another question. Uh, well, we have s s someone saying thank you for the presentation. So, so, um, so thanks to, uh, again. And then the data structure you mentioned just now—that was the was that the R tree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then another question we've got is: uh, Are the vectors normalized when you're doing those comparisons? Sorry. Would you need to normalize the vectors before doing? Those comparisons. Good question. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. If it's top of my head. Uh, team members says um, if you want to do it efficiently, yes. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I'm not really sure. We want to explain why it's more efficient then. Uh, you can use a similarity measure called cosine similarity, uh, which like compares the angle of vectors. And um, if you don't normalize your data, you have to like divide uh, the dot product by the length of the vectors. Mm. And if you have normalized data, you just save this division. Yep. So that's special for the cosine similarity. If you use another similarity, um, it really depends on how um, it is calculated. OK. Cool. I guess uh, I don't think we have any more questions. So I guess we can wrap up there. So thanks again for, for presenting. It was very, very interesting. Uh, I've linked to the slides uh, on the chat. And then there's a link to the project as well. Um, but I guess uh, thank you to uh, Fabian and Sebastian for presenting to us. And thanks, to everybody, for, uh, for taking the time to watch. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you.